how to identify and release energy blocks that shut down that creativity and passion, and then how to set energetic boundaries to protect your energy, and then how to tap into your sacral energy and your sacral chakra to boost creativity, pleasure, and passion. And everyone hydrate. One of the things that supports the sacral chakra, it's a water center, is also drinking water. My goal today is to help you to master your energy because when you master your energy, you master your life. In our modern world, we are conditioned or programmed to believe that when we get the marriage, get the degree, get the house, have the kids, have the fancy car, X number of dollars in our bank account, that everything is going to start being great for us. That's the lie that we've been sold. And that's created the rat race, the trappings of success. But we don't realize is that if we want to create changes in our outer world, if we want to manifest things, if we want to experience something different, it's an inside out game. Our inner, our outer world, what's going on out here is that a reflection of your inner world. So if you want to powerfully change your outer world, it starts with mastering your inner world, mastering your energy, mastering your emotions. Having this mastery of self is key. You master that, you're going to master your life. That unlocks everything. But we are not going to be good consumers with buying all of the things that are in all the ads trying to get us to buy that we put our money into, we're not going to be good consumers if we realize that we've got a lot of treasure here within us. There's like buried treasure within you. When I coach clients, I like to think of Michelangelo and the statue of David. Michelangelo was asked, how did he carve and sculpt the statue of David out of this big rock or stone? How did you do that? And Michelangelo's response was, I just simply chipped away the things that didn't belong. Whenever I work with someone, it's not that they're broken or there's something wrong with you. It's that we have either subconscious programming, limiting beliefs, things that we've taken on by society, by culture, by our parents, by religion, all these different things that give us shame, et cetera. And we've taken all this on and forgotten how truly amazing we are. All I do when I work with my clients, they're already masterpieces, but let's just remove the things that are weighing you down, holding you back, not allowing you to fully emerge as your masterpiece. This helps you to break free. So if you've been feeling stuck or powerless, that's just temporary. Shifting your energy, that's the key. And that's how you can live a passionate life filled with love, joy, and creativity and bliss. I'm going to share a personal story here. I remember the days when my temper would flare over the smallest things. I could go from zero to 100 so fast. It was exhausting and alienating. Some days I felt like I was pushing everyone away, even my daughters. Everything changed for me when I dove deep into Tantra and energy mastery because emotions are energy emotions that help me work with my emotions. I learned to pause, reflect, and respond rather than react. My mother was an alcoholic. So I thought I was doing such a good job with my daughters because I was sober and I was breaking that cycle of generations and I wasn't drinking like so many generations before me. But I would still rage and react the way I had seen in my household with my mom because my mom was a raging alcoholic. And she would get really angry and temperamental. And so that's what I got used to. And I realized that I was like a dry drunk. I would rage or yell. And it wasn't physically abusive, but I would yell and handle things in not the best way. Then my children didn't feel as safe with me. And unfortunately, I didn't discover Tantra until they were adults. But thank goodness now we've healed that relationship. But I'm telling you, everything changed. I read a lot of books. And my older daughter would tell me that she would see me read self-help books. And she's like, you would read the self-help books. And for a little while, things would change. And you would be different. And then after you would start reading that book, you would go back to the same thing because we have these patterns, right? Many times we're unaware that these patterns are playing out. We think that knowledge is power, but when we implement that knowledge and we embody it, that's when it's power. If we just hold it up in here in our minds and we intellectualize it, but we don't apply it to our lives and know how to actually have it be within how we be and operate now as a human, we don't create the change. 
And she said, it wasn't until Chandra that you really changed. With that and with all the work that I've continued to do, now I have such an even healthier relationship than ever with my daughter. So this doesn't just help with relationships, it helps with friends, coworkers, family, everyone. So it's really amazing. Now, why is this important to you? Empowerment. You can take your power back. Your ability to respond instead of react is empowering. I used to be very reactive, but I learned that my ability to respond is my responsibility. One of the things that helped me the most with this is I would just remember people's behavior is a reflection on them. My response to their behavior is a reflection on me. So I just needed to focus on how I was responding instead of just getting really angry or upset if something wasn't going my way. And then I would go off sometimes. So luckily now my daughters are calling me and they're like, mom, I need some zen. I'm very chill now. Thank goodness. But just imagine a future where you're no longer held back by emotional or energetic blocks or you're not damaging relationships with angry out. This is a major transformation that's possible, not just minor changes. These are making big shifts, like big hinges moving big doors and opening up your whole world to you. So that can impact your life in beautiful ways and your relationships. You could spend years facing emotional blocks alone, stay stuck in frustrating cycles with Without help, I did that for 44 years. It wasn't fun. But right now, I'm going to give you some tools that have helped me to really break free from that so that you can have a quick way to accelerate your growth. And so you can start to identify these blocks and understand what could be holding you back. And then that can open up more creativity, more passion, deepen your relationships by having these tools at your fingertips. Now, secret number two, how to set energetic boundaries to protect your energy. One visual that I use is I think of people are either a faucet or a drain. So choose wisely. There's always those people that can really drain your energy and you'll know how you feel when you're around them. Your body will tell you if you pay attention. Or there's also people that pour into you. And sometimes you might need your friends to pour into you, but it needs to be a reciprocal thing. But if they're constantly draining you and they never pour back, be aware of that. I just did a post on my Instagram the other day about energetic vampires. It's important to set boundaries to protect your energy from things that are draining you. And define your limits. I have a new way of looking at boundaries based on my values and just know what you are and are not willing to tolerate in your life and be able to communicate those things. And remember, prioritize yourself because every time you say yes to someone else, you're saying no to yourself. You need to stop saying no to yourself. Whenever someone invites me to do something, even if I feel pretty pumped about it, I'm like, yeah, I think I really would want to do that because I am a recovering people pleaser. I give myself space to pause. So start for a week or so. I invite you to just Let people know, say, oh, thanks so much for sharing that with me or asking me. Let me just take some time. I'll let you know. And if it's something that's more pressing that you need to let them know within 24 hours, give me some time to sit with that and I'll get back to you in 24 hours. I'll get back to you next week. Start to do that so you can practice even saying that to someone and just sit with it and really sit and feel like, okay, how do I really feel about this where I'm not pressured to respond? How I realized I was having negative energy was I heard someone say, try to go 24 hours without saying anything negative. I was like, oh, that's no big deal. Easy peasy. And I did that and I didn't realize how hard it was to not say anything negative for 24 hours. And if you look at it, we're bombarded all the time with negative things in the media, negative news. So one of the things I'll encourage clients to do too is to have a trusted news source, but don't stay on the news all the time and be plugged into that because there's a lot of negativity in that. And even watching TV and your lyrics, your songs, we are immersed in negativity. We've been swimming in it so long, we don't realize it. So I did that and I was like, wow, that was interesting. And I had someone that was also a travel nurse with me and we were really close friends. We hung out a lot together in LA and Misery Loves Company. So we would commiserate and talk about victim mindset stuff and we would just go into our problems together. And when I started making this shift, I asked her one day, I said, hey, could you try this exercise? Could you do 24 hours without saying negative? And she was like, yeah, I'll try to. And that's the last phone conversation I ever had with her. We remain Facebook friends. Once every few years, she'll send me a birthday text or something like that. But she realized 
I wasn't going to be available for that. And she wasn't wanting to shift. When you start to change this, some relationships may fall away, but know that sometimes we have to clear things out and make space for other things to come in. It was actually the best thing for me since I was on this new journey. It didn't have to be like an argument or anything like that. It's just when your energy starts to change, some of those lower vibrational things that you might be tired of, they remove themselves when you start to shift because we're energetic beings. Now, one thing I did, I want to show this pendulum here. When I first started trying to not be negative, I swung, we do this a lot, I overcorrected and I swung the pendulum too far the other way. And then I leaned a little bit almost to toxic positivity. My doctors would call me out on that. They're like, oh my gosh, mom, this toxic positivity. And I was like, you guys are just, I'm just happy over here. But then I realized there was a lot of other things I wasn't addressing. So that's a whole other thing. And just know it's best to make little small shifts into it don't bind yourself. If you notice that you do these things, don't shame yourself, make yourself bad or wrong or feel like, oh, I need to go extreme in this other direction. So just want to share that. These things are important because it can help you shift your life by having energetic boundaries. And then we attract positive energy because again, like attracts like. So when you're higher vibration and higher energy, you're going to attract higher vibration people, experiences, opportunities, everything starts to shift. And you'll start to also feel more energized because you're not going to be allowing people to drain your energy. We will look and pay attention to how we charge up our phone. And if the battery's low, we'll make sure our devices are okay, but we don't make sure that we're okay. How often are we just in the red or in the negative and we're not charging up our energy and we're allowing things to continue to drain us. Taking action is, you, in protecting energy, again, you could spend months trying to do that and figure out boundaries on your own. When I went through my trauma-informed master coach program, I learned from an amazing mentor and coach of mine, Alexi Panos, and she fought boundaries in a way that I've never seen taught before. It went so deep. And I share some of the things that she taught me. It's a whole new way of doing boundaries that is so powerful and you look at your values and it just makes it such a simple process. But even some of these other little things are going to help you. We can get stuck in these patterns and these cycles. You can continue to stay stuck in that if you don't create the shift. Whenever you start to shift this, you can start to attract positive energy. You apply this and you'll understand your energy and be able to protect it and raise your vibration and start to attract better energy your way. Secret number three, how to tap into your sacral energy to boost creativity, pleasure, and passion. Creativity, unlocking that creative potential that's within all of us, boost your sense of pleasure and enjoyment in your body and your life, and ignite your passion and enthusiasm for life. Here's a diagram of the chakras, the image of the woman down at the bottom, at the base of your spine, you have the root chakra. And then right below your belly button, you have the sacral chakra. This chakra is connected to our passion center. This is our creation center. And our creative energy, I'll just say something here. There is a lot of shame. And so if you have kids around, you might want to put headphones on because I'm going to use adult language here. There's a lot of shame in our society around our sexual energy, but our sexual energy is our life force energy. It is our chi energy. We were literally created from sexual energy. Our sexual energy is in our sacral chakra. Our sacral chakra is connected to our reproductive organs, and it's also connected to our mouth, which is interesting. So that's why a lot of times when people might be celibate or they're not having a satisfying sex life, they'll turn to food to stimulate that chakra. Have you ever heard anyone say, oh my gosh, this tastes better than sex? They're stimulating it through the mouth or binge eating and things like that when it's not being stimulated the other way. Because especially for women, we've been conditioned in, in society to feel so much shame. And men have to around our sexual energy, our sexuality. So good girls don't do this or that. So we shut it down. That's what I would see in my patients. A lot of even my older patients that I was seeing were having reproductive cancers and things like that. I could just sense that they were completely sexually shut down from that energy. Maybe their husband or spouse had died and they never pleasured themselves anymore and they weren't experiencing that anymore. And that energy is stagnant. I want you to think of a body of water like a river. And when a river is flowing, and I did a little reel on this the other day on my Instagram too, when the water is flowing and the river is flowing, that's healthy energy. Just like when your chakras, when the energy is flowing through you and not stuck. But when we have a block, it's almost like a kink in a water hose. Now I want you to imagine water that's 
still and stagnant, like in a pond or something. And at the top of it, there's a film on top of the water. And that's just a great kind of petri dish for bacteria and for disease to grow. Again, disease to grow in our bodies. That's when we have stuck and stagnant energy. The same thing happens within our energetic body. So that's why this is so important. And we don't have to just use our sexual energy to create a human life. We can focus that energy to create the life our heart desires. What blows my mind about there being shame about this is, again, we were literally created from this energy. So why are we shamed about that? There should be no shame in such creation. This brought us into existence. If we want to hit a powerful reset button on our lives, what better thing to do than to tap into that same energetic center and that same energy that brought us into existence. Remember, it's around by the navel, where our umbilical cord was, where we started, right? It's all connected. You see the chakras here flowing, and the green chakra here is with your heart chakra. And that connects the upper chakras, your throat chakra. You might have trouble using your voice, expressing yourself, or I'm not as talkative as childhood. I, I was very talkative because it was like my throat chakra was overactive. There's the third eye chakra, which is for your intuition. Your crown chakra helps you have dis discernment and guidance. And your heart chakra connects the upper and the lower ones, but it also connects you to the world around you. Below the heart, you have your solar plexus, and that has to do with your willpower, your courage. A lot of that is there. And then the root chakra has to do with mother-father, so mother-father wounds, safety, your tribe. All of those are connected with the root chakra. These are the things that can drain life force energy, negative thoughts, constantly worrying and stressing. Because one thing that I will say is, I have to remind myself of this too. Is me worrying and getting so stressed going to change the outcome? Or is it just lowering my energy and zapping me from being able to find a solution? Is it making my current reality even worse than it is? Having toxic relationships, I definitely had toxic relationships. That can also drain your energy, leaving you feel drained lack of sleep. I'm sure now to get at least, usually I get eight. Sometimes I get seven and a half. I'm very diligent about my sleep. And then poor diet, like processed foods, a lot of sugary drinks. Those can give you a quick energy burst, but then you have a crash. Here's the sacral chakra. And that is connected to passion. Again, it's located just below the navel, your belly button. It governs your emotions, creativity, sensuality, sexual energy. When balanced, it enhances the ability to experience pleasure joy, passionate connection, both in relationship and in creative pursuits. Put your hands right below your belly button and give that little air of your body a hug and imagine some warm orange light because it's color orange flowing through there. Then breathe nice and deep into your belly, into the space where your hands are, and just say these affirmations out loud to yourself. Say, I embrace vibrant energy and creative power. Just breathe that in. And I allow myself to feel pleasure and express my desires. So important. Just notice for a moment, you can even close your eyes and feel in what you're noticing and how you're connecting to your body. The top things that block the sacral chakra are repressing your emotions. We stuff things down. And repression and suppression lead to depression. It, Limit your joy, toxic relationships, lack of pleasure when you continue to deny yourself pleasure or sensual experiences or expressing yourself with your creativity. And trigger warning if you've had any experience of sexual trauma or guilt, past trauma, sexual shame can block that free flow of energy. And I do have a healing from sexual shame mini course that's super helpful with this because it's more common. We start being programmed to have our first subconscious experiences with shame as early as 15 months of age. Also being very rigid and controlling so you're not spontaneous. Maybe you always have to feel super in control. I used to be like this too. And that impacts our sacral chakra. Why this is so important is here. This is the energy of the emotional frequency scale. This is showing you the energy of your emotions. Shame is at the lowest vibration. At the very bottom there, 20 hertz. It's even lower than fear and anger and hate. When you get to the feeling of love, that's vibrating at 500. When you want to attract money into your life, you need to be vibrating at around the frequency of, I believe, like 250 to 280. We're programmed and bombarded with these things 
that shame us, bring us a lot of fear, get us upset. But when we're lowering our vibration as a society, we're easier to control. When we're higher vibration, it's harder to control us and more possibility is available for us and we can experience a much better life. Self-love and all these things are really important. So we're shifting that energy. At the bottom is when you're contracted and you're in fear and then when you're expanded. And your auric field with your energy can be felt. Have you ever noticed whenever someone walks in a room, how the energy of the room can shift? Or you can see someone in their energy and you're like, I would want to avoid that person. Or, oh my gosh, I'm moth to a flame. I'm drawn to that person. Because you can't fake energy. Energy is everything. Things that can support your sacral chakra, creative expression, movement and flow, water activities, then sensual enjoyment, even through your senses through eating in a sensual way taking your time and being slower with it, smelling flowers, essential oils, avoid fragrances and perfumes and these air fresheners because those are hormone disruptors and they're really having a negative impact on your health. Trust me on that one. Then having healthy boundaries and breath work and meditation is going to really raise your energy and connect you more deeply. This is important because it unlocks that passion, boosts your vitality, which is your life force energy, which helps you to live longer and have a healthier life. The impact on your health is with your physical health. If this chakra is blocked, chronic fatigue, weakened immune system, digestive issues, headaches, muscle aches, mental health, you can have anxiety, depression, irritability, lack of motivation, difficulty concentrating, and in relationships, strained relationships, difficulty connecting with others, and social withdrawal. To optimize your energy, see this guy over here? Being in the sunlight, especially sunlight early in the day, the first part of the light is the best. It has some red light. First thing when you wake up, you want to expose yourself to sunlight. And that helps to start your melatonin and your circadian rhythms and set your sleep cycle. So that's super helpful. Then movement, dance. And it doesn't have to be vigorous exercise, just moving your body, dancing and walking. I do a lot of walks. It's really helpful. One of my coaches is Preston Smiles, and he has this thing called Dance Yourself Clean. And dancing is really big also in Tantra because you have breath, sound, and movement. It helps you breathe more deeply. You're using sound. You're listening to sound. If you're singing along, you're moving and you're moving that energy through your body. Again, like the river, you're getting things flowing. He'll have this practice where he says, dance yourself clean. So if you're feeling a stuck emotion or low energy or sad, You can put on some music that evokes that feeling even more and let it out and feel all the feels. You don't want to just do toxic positivity, right? But then you can change the song and then just dance. And it's literally like dance like no one is watching. Close your eyes and just feel how your body wants to move. I'd like to do Taylor Swift Shake It Off. There's a tantra practice called the Shiva Shake. And you just shake your head, your toes, your booty, your feet, everything and shake it out. And that's a great nervous system reset too. But just Dance yourself clean. Just dance and let that energy move through your body. Again, hydration is essential and and nourishment. Giving yourself unprocessed foods for lasting energy. What I'm sharing with you today is an excerpt from my Ignite Your Passion Masterclass that I had last week. We dove much deeper into these things. And I am offering now my first ever co-ed mastermind experience. And in addition to having powerful co-ed group coaching calls where men and women can have better relationships, work with their chakras and really work with their life force energy and their vitality to expand that. We're also going to be having monthly women's only and men's only calls where you can ask your intimate questions about Tantra and relationships too. So this is going to be an amazing mastermind. If you want more information, check the description here. Also in the description, I do offer the Healing from Shame course and I have an intro to Tantra online program that goes all through the chakras, but all of my courses, my masterclass replays on um, sex positive content, all of those things are going to be included in my Tantra vault within the mastermind. So everything is there. But if you're not sure that you're really ready to dive that deep and you just want to get a little bit of an experience and dip your toes in and see what's possible for you, I invite you to check those other things out again in the description please like, share, and subscribe. That really supports this channel and share this with someone that you feel would benefit from this message too. Um, Your support is deeply appreciated. Blessings. I look forward to sharing more with you soon.